Hello and welcome to AMD Cloud Chronicles powered by AWS, where we bring insights from technology leaders across the industry. AMD is a global semiconductor company that designs high performance and adaptive computing chips. AMD processors, accelerators, graphic adaptive, SOCs, FPGAs, and system on modules that are being used to advance the future of the data center, embedded gaming, and PC markets. Now, the company is uniquely positioned to power the end-to-end -end infrastructure that is really driving this AI era with the broadest of portfolios of the highest performance compute engines and an open, proven, and also developer-friendly software platform, and also deep collaboration and co-innovation with partners, including the largest cloud OEM software and AI companies in the world. Today, we in fact are joined by a very, very special guest. I'm joined today by Mr. Biswajit Das, who's the head data and AI AWS India and SARC at AWS India. So Biswa, thank you so much for taking out the time and doing this for us. This looks like a very, very riveting conversation. With extensive leadership experience in cloud, AI, and data-driven transformation, he spearheads AWS's initiatives to enable organizations across the country to harness the full potential of data and artificial intelligence. Biswajit also has been very, very instrumental in advancing enterprise adoption of AI and cloud technologies that are driving innovation in Gen AI, scalable data infrastructure, and also sustainable cloud computing. So Biswa, once again, welcome and thank you so much. But let's get straight to it and let's get down to the brass tacks, as they say. Uh, I want to first begin with the uh, larger vision as far as India's evolving landscape is concerned. You've been instrumental in uh, taking on a lot of transformative initiatives, whether it's AI-driven, data-driven. Uh, as far as this entire transformation at AWS India is taking place. So let's begin with the vision for India. It's a very evolving landscape. How is this transformation taking place and what does that vision look like going forward? Rizma, thank you, number one, for having me here. I think I think the evolution of the data and AI landscape in India in the last few years has been absolutely remarkable and it's accelerating on several fronts. Right? The foundation of an AI future is actually, and truly its progressive power, is actually based on having a very robust data foundation. And I think increasingly enterprises, startups, governments, they have all realized this and that's where the drive is. Right? Uh, last year was a year of experimentation. Uh, this is the year where we, the entire focus is on how do you take those experiments, put them into production to be able to make impact at India scale or in the real world, right? A large pillar of that is also how do you bring trust and reliability to what you do with AI. And if you look at uh, what, we, what we do with our services like Amazon uh, Bedrock, we, as guardrails, we put into place how you can govern what you do with AI uh, how do you control hallucination? How do you control uh, reasoning, et cetera, et cetera? So, because that's an ideal pillar of where you want to, what you want to do. The the third is, especially at the, in a country like India, uh, you want your data sets to be able to reflect who you are as an organization, our demographic, your demographic, and that has again become an area of focus. But I think what really excites me most is that AI has truly become collaborative. What I mean is, in an enterprise across the line, whether it is developers, scientists, or business users, they are able to collaborate on the same use case without necessarily all having to have the same level of technical depth. Yeah. So, uh, you know, services like Amazon SageMaker, Kiro allows that to happen across the web. And that's, that's what really uh, excites me. So I think uh, scalability okay. at India scale, okay. right? Uh, collaboration for AI, and of course, uh, trust and reliability. Three pillars, that's where we're building uh, AI to go from it. Sure, very fascinating pillars. And we will, of course, get to each one of them uh, in a little more uh, detail in just a bit. But again, from an overview perspective, again, uh, from the perspective of AWS, again, you're helping a lot of organizations through their modernization process. And all of this transformation is very, very heavy as far as data is concerned. So it's very data driven. Uh, if I had to ask you some of the key enablers that are helping this very data driven transformation taking place, uh, what would those be? So, so uh, interesting because this is something that we are asked very, very often, yeah. right? And if I was to enumerate them, I'd say number one, like I said, you need an absolutely robust data foundation. Uh, data happens before AI happens, mm. right? Uh, so I, I say clean data is good AI. Uh, the number two is AI by nature 
has a very elastic workload uh, you know behavior and therefore to be able to have a compute architecture that is elastic that can take extreme peaks and then drop down to almost nothing in moments in minutes in hours is very very important i think uh, the ability to use next generation ai accelerator and what i mean by that is for example custom built silicon like uh, inference and terrenium which give you absolutely almost 50% uh, better price performance or or the hardware that we get from partners like amd right how do you optimize which chipsets with silicon you're using is very very important yeah. i think like i said security compliance absolutely key especially in a country like india uh, very regulated environment as it should be right so that's absolutely skill but again like i said uh, we we'll keep talking about software and hardware but the most important bit of ai adoption is wetware as humans you know mostly water and yeah. therefore our ability to reskill people our ability to rethink how we look at businesses is absolutely key to be able to adopt at scale what we do with ai i think absolutely um, i will get to the scale question also in just a bit but because we're talking at a time when and you mentioned this that uh, all of this requires partners right and i want to talk a little about the synergy or the partnership of AWS and AMD and how that synergy is developing or what happens next right so let's begin with AWS's own uh vision as far as uh, the next 12 to say 24 months is concerned and how your own AI strategy is being developed say with the vision of the next 12 to 24 months you have concepts like gen AI which are of course a very dominant part of our conversations today so how do you see that vision playing out say the next couple of years ridhima first of all 12 to 24 months is a very very long time in ai right even a and day is long yes and i would hate to be the crystal ball gazer who says that but from what we have our line of sight on right i i think we are looking at uh, breakthrough initiatives on several fronts hmm. the first is uh, agentic ai leadership absolutely right we are moving beyond foundation models to autonomous agents who can reason think and do on their own and i think that's absolutely critical one of the most critical pieces of what we do with ai now right uh, number 2 is the entire custom silicon revolution whether it is our own whether it is to partners like amd uh, that will become a key to making these these solutions commercially viable the third is very industry specific uh, solutions right we're yeah. moving from general world uh, thinking to saying how does this help this specific industry and to give you an example a customer like canra bank hsbc right mm. for us they have recreated an entire solution of how they do their underwriting process Correct. it has given them massive uplift and efficiency and accuracy in what was till then a very human intensive process right uh, of course uh, the global ai sovereignty is also another question that is happening as country develop their own ai uh, frameworks and that's rapidly happening how do we ensure that inherently a lot of services that we provide have those guardrails in place which sort of help you comply to the uh, country's regulations right i i think um, the next 24 months will help ai become truly enterprise grade which is to say uh, commercially viable at at india scale uh, very uh, india centric and industry centric and like i said democratized for everyone to be able to use So Bispa I want to talk to you a little more about this collaboration with AMD and you you know very rightly pointing out that there is a very evolving AI strategy that's happening as far as from an AWS perspective as well but when this evolution is happening at such a fast pace how does it actually help with your collaborations and collaborators partners like AMD So so I'm uh, so multiple fronts right and this is a this is a thing that we think very deeply about yeah. so number one first from a performance and uh, commercial viability uh, standpoint right amd's epic has be, has proven with their high density compute density and and how they have helped our customers optimize their cost they they're a very important part of everything that we do uh, along with the customers uh, in the second where we can collaborate together to make this better if you look at how we are working with their gpu series of instinct now yeah. right how we do that and how that brings uh, better optimization higher ability to do what they want to do with their ai ai, AI uh, workloads i think uh, that's a very important standpoint yeah. so essentially so we are we are making the infrastructure of the ai future 
right? Where we are moving from uh, saying, can this be from experimentation to becoming mission critical, mm. from uh, from generic to being industry specific, right? And AMD is a very, very important partner in making that happen. How lovely. Uh, but I do want to talk to you a little about uh, the opportunities for a partner like AMD then as well, right? The AWS ecosystem is very vast. It's evolving. It's got a lot of AI forward strategies. So what are the kind of opportunities that a partner like AMD then has uh, for this vast ecosystem of AWS? And this could be multiple levers, right? It could be performance. It could be scalability. What are the kind of opportunities available there? So, of course, a very important question, right? I think um, if you look at AI, there's a lot of data-heavy pre-inference workloads that still largely rely on uh, in this infrastructure. Yeah. And then we continue to see classical ML use cases, for example. Again, we built on uh, what our partners give us, right? Uh, third, entire customer segments like, uh, like our digital native customers, the SaaS providers, etc continue to use SageMaker, Redshift ML frameworks, etc., which again rely very heavily on uh, AMD. Yeah. Right? If I was to list this down and where we could really help in joint collaboration, I think if you look at compiler and framework, uh, you know, tuning, uh, inference optimization, memory bandwidth, for example. So these are the areas that we are continue where we continue to work together. Sure. And I think we'll get to a place where this becomes absolutely critical to our AI customers. So, Biswa, I want to now uh, dwell a little deep as far as industry innovation and emerging technology is concerned. Uh, we talk about Gen AI almost on a day-to-day -day basis and that's almost become like a strategic priority for every conversation, every partner, every collaborator going forward. Uh, so, I want to understand again from an AWS perspective, how is AWS really helping uh, customers experiment as we move forward either with training or deploying generative AI if you could just help us understand this from a customer perspective. So, so Ridhima, AWS takes a very com uh, comprehensive democratizing uh, view of this across mm. three strategic layers, right? I think one is infrastructure leadership, whether it is with our own custom chips like Inferentia, Terranium, which give you a 50% uh, price performance advantage or through the collaborations that we have with uh, partners like AMD. What it does is it gives our customers this competitive edge, both in terms of performance and as well as uh, making it more commercially viable, right? Uh, number two is uh, democratizing access, right? With, with services like Amazon Bedrock, all our customers, whether it is a startup, whether it is a large enterprise, whether it is a government, they get, they are able to tap into more than 250 foundational models without having to invest in, you know, PhDs in stats and in very heavy in investment in infrastructure. And then and the third is, how do you make this AI journey complete? So Correct. when you use something like the uh, Amazon SageMaker platform, it ensures that customers can build, train, deploy with all of, all of their organization security is, uh, compliances at the same time from the same platform, right? What sets us apart is, I think, our enterprise first approach to everything that we do. Customer data is never used to train any foundational model anywhere. It is always kept within their own guardrails, you know, and, and be building these uh, security compliances into the services that we bring. So Viswa, now I want to talk to you about what the vision looks like, you know, the outlook going forward and what the future in fact looks like. So I want to ask you, what specific breakthroughs in AI or data architecture that are really exciting you at the moment? And I also want to understand how do you envision AWS and AMD really coming together and jointly shaping that future as well? So I, I think looking ahead, uh, here are the breakthroughs that really excite me, mm. right? I think uh, number one is agentic AI. Mm. I think uh, that's going to change how we do a lot of things in a lot of core critical businesses, uh, business processes that we have. Right. Uh, for example, if you look at uh, our customers like DTDC, mm -hmm. so they have taken this, uh, they've used their customer agent called Deva into Deva 2.0. Sure. They're getting up to, I think, 93% more optimized uh, performance, which is brilliant for, uh, and it's core to their business, right? Uh, number two is this multimodal convergence so between text and video and, and voice, etc. Uh, using foundational models like our own Amazon Nova, you see how all of this is brought together. You don't have to go to different models to be able to do different things. I think that's an important. Uh, yeah. uh, we are seeing the rise of AI native infrastructure, which is customers who plan their entire uh, infra and architecture to say, how do we make it more AI optimized and mm -hmm. AI ready? That's important. But 
The one that really excites me is the democratization uh, effect, right from how you build an application to how you code, to how you embed it, to how you use it, mm. uh, using things like Amazon Bedrock and Kiro and our own uh, code assistance programs. Yeah. How everybody, whether it's a developer, and I'm, I'm saying this again, a scientist sure. or a business user, and I think that's the real power of bringing AI to the, to the everyday user, I think. And that, yeah. that really excites me. Okay, Biswa, so I think this is, we've covered quite a bit as part of this conversation, but I do want to ask you one last question before I let you go. Uh, I do want to ask you as a leader in data as well as artificial intelligence for uh, one of the world's largest cloud providers, uh, is there any pearls of wisdom or advice that you in fact would want to give to a lot of emerging tech leaders as far as the country is concerned? India is one of the most exciting Gen AI markets globally, right? And all the advice I have comes from what we have seen our customers do successfully or also the failures that we have had, right? So, uh, and everything that I say has, is to do with immediate action. Yeah. I think number one is start building today. Only doing is doing and the learnings come from doing. So start using uh, services like Amazon Bedrock, Kiro to be able to experiment very quickly. Uh, the second is work backwards from uh, customer needs, right? Uh, fancy demos, demos are not going to cut it anymore. Build for what is mission critical. For example, a, a customer of ours, Polar Tires, mm. they used, uh, they built a solution on Amazon Bedrock to be able to look at root, co root cause analysis for mm. tire curing process. Yeah. Uh, it's a very critical to business for them. And they, uh, and they reduced, I think, their time from approximately six hours to 10 minutes, mm. which is amazing yeah. right, for them. Uh, the third is invest in the data foundation. There is no shortcut to, to having a good data foundation. Like I said, move beyond experimentation, take the good work that you have done, see how you scale it to production because only that gives you and your organizations and your customers real value, right? Uh, like we talked a while before, every day is a new change. So yeah. embrace, uh, new learning, yeah. right? Every day, continue to upskill yourself, keep yourself updated as to what's happening today, uh, tomorrow, and day after. I think, and and very obviously, all of this has to be founded in having uh, uh, an approach to having a, a responsible AI solution. Yeah. Because after all, everything that we do uh, touches millions and billions of Indians and people uh, uh, across the globe, right? Yeah. So, for what it's worth, my two cents. Absolutely. So embrace the evolving changes, upscale and start building now. Viswa, it's been such a pleasure chatting with you. So thank you so much for taking out the time yeah. and doing this for us. Ridhima, it's been brilliant as always. And let's do a thing. Six months from now, we should be sitting here talking about how India has transformed uh, because of AI rather than how India will transform. I think that sounds like a plan. So thank you so much, Viswa, once again. And of course, thank you to the viewers for tuning in as well. This, in fact, has been a very, very riveting conversation. It's also a very exciting time for us to see how AWS is uh, driving meaningful impact across industries. And with partners like AMD in the mix, the future of cloud in India looks very, very promising. With that, we would like to thank our viewers once again for tuning in this very special episode of AMD Cloud Chronicles, part by AWS. Of course, until next time, keep pushing boundaries and building what's next. Thanks a lot for watching.